Welcome, my friends, to your weekly dose of abstract algebra. Okay, as always, before we dive into the details, let me give you a quick overview of what you're about to learn in this week. Last week we have studied uh, symmetries of an isosceles uh, triangle in depth. This week we are taking a different viewpoint and associate any such symmetry with a so-called permutation, which is nothing but a bijective map, meaning this set 1, 2, 3 get, gets mapped onto itself in a one-to-one -one fashion, like so. If, for example, we have the rotation about 120 degrees, the number 1 goes to the vertex 2 sits, so 1 maps to 2, number 2 goes to vertex 3, so 2 goes to 3, and the number 3 here moves to where vertex 1 is, so 3 moves to 1. This here is called a permutation of three elements, and we will learn how to compose such permutations. We will see that each permutation has an inverse. Composition, we already know, is associative. So, we will see that the set of all these permutations is also a group, a non-commutative group with six elements called the symmetric group on three elements, because three elements get shuffled around, in this case, the numbers one, two, three, corresponding to the vertices. And we will see that this new group is in essence nothing but the group we already know, the group of symmetries of a triangle. We are still taking baby steps in learning about the notion of a group in some very concrete examples before in about two weeks we start off with the abstract notion of a group. So last week we studied symmetries of a triangle and learned that they form a group under composition of maps. This week we take a slightly different viewpoint, but it's very much related to the symmetries of a triangle and study so-called permutations and find out that they build or form a group as well and that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two pictures, if you wish. So, recall, R1 was the symmetry of the triangle that rotated by 120 degrees counterclockwise. So this is depicted here. And now, instead of looking at this triangle, we could say, well, we take three objects called one, two, and three, here written in a set. And then we take a bijective map from this set to itself. Now, if you have never heard of the term bijective map before, that's not uh, so dramatic. This is just a one-to-one -one correspondence such that each number here gets assigned exactly one number so that all the numbers here are different. Let's take a look at this example here. Instead of considering this R1 as a symmetry of the triangle, I define a map, rho, a little Greek R, rho 1, from this set of these three elements, 1, 2, 3, to itself as follows. Here, this triangle, I ad identify with this triple of numbers here. This is a very important difference. Here, these parentheses mean no order. The order is irrelevant. This is uh, the notation for a set. Whereas here, the round parentheses mean the order here is important. So this is not the same. This triple of numbers here means Vertex 1 has number 1, vertex 2 has number 2, and vertex 3 has number 3. Now, what happens? This number 1 here wanders to vertex number 2 here in the, uh, in the right down corner. So I say 1 maps to 2. What happens to vertex 2? It wanders to or what better, the number two, what happens to the number two? It wanders to where vertex number three is here, up above. So two maps to three, and the number three wanders to vertex number one. So three maps to one. 
Now there's a better or shorter way to denote this map. We write here the initial order of the three elements, one, two, three, and then below we write down the numbers to where they are mapped. So one goes to two means we have this, two goes to three is that, and three goes to one is that. And now bijective simply means we have here and here the same numbers, but possibly in a different order, such as here. I could also write one, two, three. This would be the identity. Okay, so this here is not allowed. This would not be bijective because one and three would get mapped to the same number two. This is still possible for any map between these sets, but it is not possible for such a symmetry of the triangle because each number must be assigned to one single vertex. So, and this here is called a permutation. So it's nice to see where this comes from, but we might as well forget all these geometric notions and simply define any permutation like that. And we will see that we can calculate with them or compose just like we did here without any reference to a triangle. But for the beginning, I think it's best to have this uh, geometric background in mind. To further clarify, we do the same for the symmetry, which is reflection or flipping about an axis. We take this symmetry axis and flip the triangle. Now I would suggest you pause this video and try to write down the permutation that corresponds to this symmetry here. All right, this shouldn't have been too hard. In case you haven't seen the last video or the last videos and are wondering where this strange uh, letter S comes from, now rotation and reflection start with the same letter in English, so I took the German word for reflection, Spiegelung, which starts with an S, so we have R and S. And here I take a small Greek S, a sigma, sigma, this here, okay. Now sigma one does what? Vertex one stays where it is, so one maps to one, and vertices two and three simply get interchanged, so two goes to three, three goes to two, and that's it. And we don't use this notation anymore, but from now on we simply use this very convenient notation for any permutation. Okay, now we take a look at how to compose two permutations. This is very, very easy and much more convenient than, at least for me, because I can't really think geometrically much more convenient than thinking about symmetries of a triangle. So we take this composition, row one, composed with sigma one. Remember, we're reading from right to left, so this means apply sigma one first, and then after that, row one. So you simply write down these permutations here, and now you start here, from right to left. So one gets mapped to one, now you look here, one gets mapped to two, so one ends up at position two. Two gets mapped to three, three gets mapped to one, so we end up with one. And now here must be a three because we want to have a bijective map. So let's see, three goes to two, two goes to three. All right, so we have another permutation. And now if we translate this back into this geometric setting, we see, well, this is the symmetry where vertex three does not get moved. So this here is nothing but the reflection about the axis that goes through vertex three, which simply interchanges one and two. And this, at least for me, is easier to write this down with these numbers and then think about instead of thinking how I rotate and flip the triangle. So it's also very easy to find the inverse element of such a permutation. You simply read from bottom to top. So if you want to find the inverse permutation for row one, we start here with the one at the bottom. This must go to three. 
Then for the two, we start here, two goes to one and three, of course, then must go to two. Now, if you think about this in this geometric setting, one going to three means rotation by 240 degrees, which we already know is indeed the inverse element to R1. And you should convince yourself that this is actually true. So just pause the video for a moment and convince yourself that this composition gives you the identity permutation, which does nothing at all, which leaves the triangle as it is. Yeah, just write down that and convince yourself that this is true and maybe also the other way around, that rho inverse composed with rho is exactly the identity. Okay, summing up, we arrive at the following conclusion or definition. If we take the set of all permutations of three elements, I call them one, two, three, I could also have called them banana, apple and peach or whatever, doesn't matter. And for those who know this uh, term, we could also call a permutation a bijective map from this set to itself. But simply think of a permutation as this object, that's enough. So we take the set of all these permutations and call it capital S sub 3. Then this set consists of the identity, this permutation that does nothing, these two permutations that correspond to rotating the triangle by 120 or 240 degrees, and these three permutations that correspond to flipping the triangle about one of the three symmetry axes. Then we have a set consisting of six elements, which are now not no longer symmetries, but permutations. And we take composition of maps as our binary operation on this set to put two of these together. Then obviously we get another permutation. So this set is closed under this operation here of composition. Combine any two permutations, you get another one. This should be obvious from here. And this whole set together with composition then forms a group. This group is called the symmetric group on three elements. Beware that doesn't mean that there are three elements in this group. This group has six elements, but that the permutation permutes three different elements. So do not get confused here. Why is this true? Remember we have the three axioms that must be fulfilled for a set with a composition um, to be called a group. I'll show them to you again here. So we need associativity. This is always true for composition of maps. You already did this on problem set one, exercise four. There must be an identity, a neutral element. Of course, this is this permutation that does nothing. And for each element, there must be an inverse element that reverses the action of the first element. Yeah, we just saw how every element has an inverse. You can, of course, check this for yourself or all the others, but it's always the same method. So we have a group. This set together with composition is a group. It is, of course, non-commutative because it is essentially the same as the group of these symmetries. And for those, we already know they are not commutative. A good exercise for you would be to actually take two elements, compose them in two different orders and find out if they commute or not. And you will find elements that do not commute. And now to conclude, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between here the group of symmetries of an isosceles triangle, that's how we started with, and the symmetric group on three elements. We just described this here, how each symmetry gives rise to a permutation and vice versa. But there's more. This one-to-one -one correspondence also respects or preserves the composition Meaning, 
If I have, for example, this relation here in this group, R1 composed with S1 equals S3, then I can map R1 to rho1, S1 to sigma1, and if I take the composition here in the symmetric group of rho1 composed with sigma1, I end up with the element that corresponds to S3, sigma3. And this is what we will later call an isomorphism, meaning these groups are essentially the same. We simply label their elements differently. Instead of R1, I call this rho1. And instead of thinking about a symmetry of a triangle, I think about a permutation. But in the end, there is not much difference besides different labeling. This is a very important concept, the concept of isomorphic groups. So and this is this symbol equal sign with such a curly, curly line over it. We'll have much more to say about this later, but just that you have heard this notion already. All right, this already concludes our lesson for week two of a friendly introduction to abstract algebra. If you're disappointed and say, well, this is all trivial and we're moving so slow, well, first of all, if I want to keep uploading new material every week, I can't go at a much faster pace. Otherwise, I run out of breath and time and whatever in about a month. On the other hand, don't be fooled. Uh, the material will get more and more advanced. And, and since this course is especially aimed at uh, beginners or struggling math students like I once was, I think this is enough to digest for one week and do not forget please do the exercises there will be the problem set number two where you do exactly those things now with permutations instead of symmetries so please download it and try to solve as much as you can the solution video will be uploaded some days from now i hope you enjoyed that thanks for listening Please comment, like and subscribe and help this channel to grow. Yeah, it would actually be a very nice reward uh, for me to see that this course reaches a lot of people and that a lot of people would benefit um, from these explanations here. All right, see you soon. Bye bye.